Hey everybody, welcome to the Totally Tim Show. Today what we're going to be working on is uh, we're going to put a heat shield on a fireplace, a freestanding fireplace, wood stove, whatever you want to call it. Um, the deal is, is I've had this home for several years and this fireplace has just been kind of sitting in the corner, the wood stove's kind of been sitting in the corner and um, both my wife and I are very you know, leery, if you will, for lack of a better term, about this. This is just regular wood paneling in the back. So what we're going to do today is we're going to install a heat shield. I'm going to show you how to do that. It's pretty simple. It doesn't require a lot of products, but we'll go through the products here in just a minute and you guys will get to see the whole process. So we'll see you guys back here in just a second. I'm going to start by cleaning the wall just because it's been a lot of, it's been quite a few years actually um, since the wood stove has been in here. And what happens is, especially with, if you guys have paneling behind your, um, behind your fireplace or wood stove, what tends to happen is, ooh, uh, and look at that, I'm gonna make a giant mess. Um, what tends to happen is the wood will, will desiccate. It will just dry out really super bad. And I've kind of got this stuff all over my, um, all over my fireplace. <laughs> but what I'm doing is the stuff that I'm using to actually clean my, my wall with is it's just an RV antifreeze, winter antifreeze. And the reason why I'm using the winter antifreeze to do it is because it's got emollients or preservatives or, I don't know, lubricants. And the lubricants <coughs> are actually pretty good for your wall. They're pretty good for your wood um, in this case. So we'll just go ahead and wipe this down really fast. Get rid of any cobwebs. And I don't want to add like oils or anything like that. Something that might damage the wood or catch on fire behind it because it will get warm. It will get warm. It's not going to get as hot as it did. So one of the first things that we want to do is we want to um, we want to measure what we need. Uh, how high do we want this to go? Now I typically won't go um, double the space, or I'll usually go about twice as high as my my stove is. So my stove is about 22 inches. So about 44 to 48 inches is just fine. And if you kind of measure back and 48 kind of puts us right here in the middle of the wall. I, don't, I know you guys can't see it, but it kind of puts us right here in the middle of the wall. And that's actually really super good because the way that we're going to build this is pretty cool in the sense that we're going to, um, we're going to leave a space at the bottom so that we have that that airflow, that convection airflow. That happens when you heat one surface and the other surface is cold, it creates this, whew, this draft of air that goes up. So we're going to make sure that we're safe. We can just make this work using the heat from the, from the wood stove. All right, I have a product here. And what the product is, is it's called Top Hat Channel. So one thing that you will need is a spacer. And the reason why you need a spacer is because we need to keep our top hat channel roughly six inches from this um, this cement stand or pad basically that the wood stove is setting on. So today we're going to use we're going to be using hex head screws. Um, there's not a lot of room back here, so I apologize, but I have to kind of be on this side. So this is how we're going to set it up. We're going to set this one at the extreme of where we want to be. So this one is set as far this way as we can. There's a window that's right here. So this is pretty much as far as we can. Now you can extend this out if you really want to and go over the window or whatever and that's just going to be trailer park trash. But um, if you really just you're just looking to basically buffer the heat. So we're going to run this one and I'm going to attach it with some screws. And Obviously you want to make sure that this is level just for appearance look so you guys um, so it looks good. Well that's kind of a not a great one.
So we've gone ahead and installed all of our top hat. Um, the cool thing about top hat is we laid, we took the top hat, um, and we just laid this part against the wall so it's very much like this. Um, we made sure to, that they were, the spacing was 20 inches or roughly 20 inches from where we wanted to. And the reason why is because the flashing that we have, which happens to be really heavy, um, I would have preferred to get the aluminum because aluminum works very well for dispersing heat much faster than uh, steel does. But all I could find was galvanized steel and I got a 100 foot roll. So next and more similarly important um, is called what we call J-channel. And what J-channel is for is it's usually it's typically used on soffits it's for making soffits. But as you can see, it's kind of got like a really nice little J portion to it. Um, this particular stuff is painted. It, it doesn't matter. It comes in 12 foot sticks, uh, relatively inexpensive. What we're using this stuff for is we're going to line, we're going to put it on the bottom and then we're also going to put it on the top. And what that's going to do is our sharp edges from our steel will lay on the inside of that and it will look really good. So uh, I'll go ahead and start installing this. So as you can tell, the top and bottom piece, they leave plenty of room, if you guys can see my fingers, they leave plenty of room for the air to get through there. So it's about three quarters of an inch. It's the same with this, obviously, the top hat. So that's kind of how we did it. So now there's the top, the top plate, and the bottom plate. Now I do want to tell you right off the bat that when you're doing this project, you want to make sure that you only put the top on one side, on one side. And the reason why, and you'll see pretty quick, is because on the back side is uh, we're going to have a bent piece. We're going to have a, a, a much narrower piece, obviously, and it's going to be bent, which means we won't be able to get it in the system um, easily. But by leaving it the this secondary side open, we can easily finagle that piece, get it into place, and then install the top the the other top piece and then we're gold, right? So We've completed our shield, our heat shield. It looks pretty good. The walls did flex a little bit, so there was a little imperfection in some of the uh, some of the materials. See slight gaps. Um, nothing like that you could catch your finger on, or anything in that case. Um, primarily, what we were looking for is just something that would protect the wood and the material behind it, and it would helpfully prevent the possibility of a fire. But I do want you guys to know that adding a heat shield is in no way, shape or form a guarantee that your home won't catch on fire or that the wood behind it won't become damaged or destroyed um, due to the use of a wood stove. Until next time, guys, I appreciate you guys watching the show. Please give me a thumbs up. Uh, do make sure that you subscribe, hit the like button and subscribe subscribe right there until next time guys thanks for watching we'll see you guys on the next episode